The next step in our audit log table is to create a script that actually creates a record after each field is modified. It's a pretty simple script. We're going to go into our script workspace, make a new script. In fact, I'm going to put a new divider here, so I'm going to duplicate this with the keyboard command so we can keep each one of these sections separate. We could use folders also, but we won't have that many scripts. Add our new script. We're going to call it new, or we'll call it audit table, and we'll put new in brackets. There we go. Looks good to me. Uncheck it. Don't need it under there. And the first thing we're going to do is set a variable. We need to connect our contact manager to our audit log table. So we're going to say dollar sign ID is equal to the primary key. Simple as that. We can bring that on over to the other table. We have a few other things we need to do, so I'm going to duplicate this. We're going to say we also need the field. So we'll get active field name. Pretty simple. Put that into a variable. We'll duplicate again and we'll put data and put active field contents. Pretty simple. Now we can actually change layouts and lose context but still have the data that we want to move over there. So we'll say go to layout. FileMaker's already made us an audits table. We don't really need to have it look good. We're just going to use what we have there. Um, we may pretty it up later, but nobody's ever going to see this audit table. They're going to see the portal into the audit table, but not this table. And then we do set fields. Actually, I should say I got ahead of myself. We need to create a new record first. Then we can do our set fields. And I'll go in the same order I have here, which is set our foreign key to dollar sign ID. Now you can save yourself a lot of time by duplicating these, not just because you're duplicating this, but because I don't have to switch from contacts to audits. Because what comes up here on a new set field is whatever layout's in the background. We're not on the audit layout background or the layout. We're on the layout for our contact manager. So it would normally come up with contacts. But I'm saving time by duplicating here. So remember that kind of little trick there. And we'll say, OK, we're going to put our field name in there. And now I don't have to type the dollar sign. I can just put the word field here. Actually, I highlighted it incorrectly. There we go. Kaboom. Duplicate again. Do our change data. Change that to data. There we go. And last but not least, we actually want to put something inside that timestamp. The one, not the modified or created, the housekeeping fields, but the one that we're actually keeping track of what's gone on when it happened. So we just say get current timestamp. There we go. Good. And then go back to the original layout. That's it. That should be our entire script. Now, we haven't decided how we're going to run it, which script trigger we're going to use, but let's try it out by simply putting our cursor in a field and then running it. So we'll need to put it under the menu. I should have left it checked on. So we're in that company field. We'll run the script. You notice that it changes to this tab. That means it's left layouts. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's try first name next. You can actually see the stuff showing up here. You can see all the changes being made there. And if we go and visit that layout, we'll see we have two records. One, in fact, we need to put all the fields on here. And probably the easiest way is to delete all these, come over here into our fields, select them all, and simply drag them out there. And that way I can do that the quickest. Go to Browse Mode, and you can see that we have one record for the company field and one record for the name first. 
So very simple. Now let's talk about what happened when we actually make that change. When we come back, we're back on this tab. Well, that's because we're switching layouts. And what happens when you switch layouts is you lose what's called context. So context in this situation is what tab selected. So we can easily fix that by coming here and trying to use uh, preserve the trigger target panel. Now that's great and all and we can put that in here and that will preserve it. We can set a variable up here to whatever our current uh, table or, or tab control is and then back here restore it when we come back. The only problem is we also have to restore where our cursor is and where our portal row is selected. Remember, people are typing in here. They don't know you're logging all these changes, and so things shouldn't change. And if it goes away, even for a second, and then comes back on their cursor somewhere else, or their portal row somewhere else, or their tack, it's, it's really not a usable solution. But trying to track all these things, I mean, I have techniques for tracking, you know, the, the target uh, panel in a tab control. I have a way to, to figure out which uh, field you're in and, and possibly even where your cursor is in that field uh, you know a lot of things like that and then you can you know also track which portal row you are maybe what field you're in you can see it gets to be a long long list and while this is probably the most common way to make a related record I use it all the time it's not good in the sense that it loses context so we're going to take a look at a different approach to this problem without having decided which script we're going to run that won't lose context. First we want to get that so we can make sure we have a really solid solution here before we decide which script trigger we're going to use. We need to make sure that we don't lose context. We don't want these people going, what the heck is happening? It's, it's your job to do this stuff unbeknownst to them.